Hello, Incarnation family, and welcome to another episode of Incarnation Alive. This week, we have Reverend Mr. Tom Healy, Deacon Tom himself. Tommy boy, glad to have you on our program tonight. So we want to get to know you. Good to be here. Good to be here, Patty. Oh, good. Thanks. It's a a wicked, wicked smart evening to spend with you, Tommy. Um, So... In order to get to know you better, we want to hear, first of all, where are you from, Tommy? Tell me all about where so you're from. So where, where do you think? Where do you think, Pat? <laughs> the B stands for what, I mean, Baltimore? Baltimore? I got the Bruce thing going on, you know, the hat, the thing, and I have a slightly exaggerated Boston accent at the moment. So, you know, I'm from Cambridge, Mass. I, uh, I, I you know, was born there, you know, and I was born at uh, Cambridge City Hospital, and, you know, they inject the uh, Red Sox random uh, thing into you when you're born and you know, for many that, years that thing. injection led to sadness and frustration oh. until what much like 2004 pain. and then suddenly it was like every three years you win a series much pain now <laughs> now we're just spoiled but now you're good right <laughs> um well that's awesome so um tell me about uh, wife kids family what what is what does the healy family look like so the healy family looks like uh my wife, Joe, who some of you may know, and uh, I have two children, Brenna and David. David is working construction. Brenna is up working in D.C. for Capital Power Group doing uh, engineering stuff. And, and I was I'll lucky to have David it. in the youth ministry program. It was a pleasure hanging out with him for a couple of years, but I think I missed yeah. Brenna. I think she was too old. For when I yeah, she, she was in Chris's time frame. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Awesome. So... so And then I don't know, people might not know this, but as a deacon, you actually have a full-time job that is not church-related. And so tell us about that. That's correct. Uh, There are a number of deacons, like uh, Deacon Chris, who actually, you know, work for the diocese, um, and and they get paid by the diocese, but they're not getting paid for the diocese to be deacons. They're getting paid to be directors of worship or psychiatrists or administrators or some other jobs within the diocese themselves. Um, uh, and, and then, uh, there are nobody in the diocese that's getting paid for being a deacon, um, being just a deacon. They may have diaconate associated with uh, them and it may be a requirement that they're a deacon to have the administrative job that they have. Um, I work for the university of Virginia, uh, the Darden school of, that's right. Go who? Right. Um, the Darden school of, uh, business. Are we switching hats? You know, it's okay. We're switching hats. And we're switching hats, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to go with all the all the good news we can get from UVA for UVA. That's right. Uh, I work for Darden School, and I'm reigning uh, national champions because you work for the Darden School. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, I work in IT over there. We have a systems integrator to pull all uh, mm. data from all these different systems and try to make a cohesive view of our business. And that, that sounds, sounds fascinating. That sounds exciting. It is. Yeah. <laughs> now, originally, we were going to spend the next 20 minutes talking about systems integration, but um, it turns out there's other questions I have to get to. So unfortunately, yeah. you guys, I know there's a lot of people who are disappointed that we're not hanging out on that topic. I was prepped. I was ready. You know? <laughs> right. You got, you got your notes. Um, I have my notes. We'll just throw those away, as you often do with Patrick. You just, <laughs> the script is gone. <laughs> So as when I began at Incarnation a few hundred years ago, um, Tom was involved as an adult leader in youth ministry, and it was awesome having you involved for a few years. Um, But what are you up to now in terms of ministry? What are you doing at Incarnation with your time? So um, my my ministry time at Incarnation is actually, uh, you know, you asked the question, what ministries? Right now, I'm just doing liturgical ministry. There's, uh, there's not a lot of other ministry to be doing right, right here during COVID. Um, and, uh, but I've, I'm involved with uh, RCIA, and I, um, I was for many years uh, a coordinator with them, um, as well as hanging out with you on Sunday night. Um, I do not uh, do that uh, full time. John and, John and Sarah are doing that now. Um, and I uh, just do liturgy and, and Remain available, I guess, is the thing. I've done catechesis uh, at the dis- uh, discretion of the pastor for various people. Um, you know, whatever whatever needs to be done, you know, it's pretty much like you, Patrick. We do with them on senior ass. Right. <laughs> and that defines our ministry. <laughs> yeah. 
Nice. And just in case, um, RCIA is Right of Christian, Christian Initiation for Adults. It's the program to become Catholic. Um, pretty awesome. And uh, John and Sarah LaProud are currently running that. And thank goodness, because they're wonderful. Um, so you have a day job. You've got a wife and kids. You've got roles as a deacon in the church. How do you balance all of those aspects of your life? Well, do you balance? And if yeah. so, when you're successful at it, what does that look like? Well, it's it's a uh, it can get really crazy. And I would I would say that you know balance is defined over the long term. <laughs> yes. You know, right. there are times when it's really really busy at work, and that's kind of what's going on right now. There are times when it's really really busy at church, and that's uh, has happened in the past. And there's times when it's really really busy with family. You know, and uh, so there's, as, as you know, there's an ebb and a flow and it's like wrestling jello, right? It just sort of, you just sort of work with it and try not to get too crazy. Um, and it's like wrestling to, in jello. Find that out. And you what know, you said it's like wrestling in jello? I did. And you, you have experience Balancing with ministries this. like, what was that? You have experience with this? I have, I have experience in wrestling jello. Yes. Actually, that and hurting Jim cats, Rasmus. and yeah, that and hurting cats. You know, yeah. so I'm going to turn you up a little bit because I, I apparently cannot hear you. Sorry, I'll, I'll speak into your good ear from now on. No, that's that's fine. No, I turned you up, so you're a little you're a little louder at my end. Excellent. Um, so I want to come back to RCIA um, and how you sort of got into your faith and the the long road that you took. Um, now, a few years ago, having I, I am fortunate enough to have been your friend for many years. Um, one of the most impactful youth ministry evenings that we ever did was a few years ago when you shared your story of alcoholism and recovery with the teens at high school youth group. And then you have also been public after that in uh, speaking in homilies and sharing your story with others. Um, and that that uh, process of recovery led you into a conversion experience and then into RCIA and uh, involving Curcio and, and then becoming a deacon. And tell me about that. What was that whole experience like for you? Right. So, um, and, and I'm glad that that, uh, that night I spent with them was, was useful. Um, it was, um, and, it, and I will say that it changed the tenor of some of the small group discussions after that, Absolutely. you know, because, because they knew, uh, first of all, that I wasn't perfect and that I had something that um, maybe they had or somebody in their family had or, you know, so it helped break the ice and, you know, we were able to talk about things. Yeah, you, you were better. vulnerable in a way that allowed other people to also be vulnerable and to share their struggles, knowing that I don't have to have all my stuff together to be a Christian. I don't have to be perfect and holy to follow Jesus. And that I think is one of the amazing stories of recovery is that no matter what, no matter where you have been, you are still called to sainthood and Jesus is still there to, to call you and bring you and love you and, and welcome you to follow him. Right, and I would I would make the case, and I know you would too, that it's really understanding and and um, being open to our brokenness that really um, makes us uh, open to Jesus and open to uh, you know God and a conversion experience and all those things because we're left with you know I, I don't have I don't have all the answers you know I, as a matter of fact I have no answers you know there are times when I have absolutely no answers to how to live my life you know and that was that was the point I was at with my alcoholism, you know, drinking was killing me. It's getting me all kinds of legal trouble. I had my, you know, my relationships were horrible, you know, if I had any at all. So, uh, you know, you, you're driven to your knees as Abe Lincoln said, you're driven to your knees by the firm conviction. You have nowhere else to go. And that's, you know, kind of what started the road for me. And I, and I, I will have to share this in openness. The law had something to say about that. They were very interested in me attending AA. And to some extent, I'm grateful for that. But, you know, nobody really wants that sort of help, right? <laughs> you know, that's, that's the not kind of, that kind of help you want. But it can happen. But they also, you can, I, I share that just so, you know, you can come, we come into, into we come to Jesus, into God with you know, all our scars and warts. And, you know, we definitely are not perfect. But as you said, that doesn't mean we stay there. 
right. you know, we continue to grow and, and hope and holiness. And so part of my growth, you know, um, thing was to, was to, uh, after being sober in AA for a number of years and getting married and then raising children, um, my, uh, my mother-in-law, uh, as, as mother-in-laws often can do, um, they, they told, she told my wife to, that you better get that baby baptized because it would, you know, end up in limbo. And, and that was, of course, we don't teach that anymore, but it was something of her, you know, she was concerned about that. So um, out of Brenna getting baptized, I <laughs> do RCIA. And so, um, you know, I, I came in the back door on that and went through RCIA, you know, with Father Bill, uh, under Father Bill's regime, and uh, was confirmed in the church uh, on Easter uh, Triduum. I'm going to say 96 or 97. Is that, I can't remember the exact date. 18, but, you know, 1897? 1896 and 97. You know, it's been a long time. I've been at, at, at this for a while and I age well. Yeah, really, um, it, really well. You look great <laughs> really, for 230. Really, really well. Yeah. And, um, and, and RCIA, um, you know, opened the door for me to, to a Christian life, really. Um, you know, I, I was coming to church, but I, I definitely, um, uh, understood a little more what it meant to be Christian and uh, what it, you know, the, the, just having the confirmation sacrament, you know, and, uh, and, and just reaffirming my vows to the church uh, at that time really meant a lot to me. And it led into another spiritual uh, fellowship, into a spiritual fellowship called Priscio. I was invited to go to a Priscio weekend. And, um, and that was a wonderful spiritual experience. Um, and, and a great time, you know, and a great fellowship. But the thing that led me to growth with Priscio was the, the weekly meetings, you know, mm -hmm. meeting with other men and, and uh, going through various books and, and developing relationships with Christian men. And, and um, for me, it was valuable to, you know, be around older men who, were raised, who had already raised their children. And could tell me, Tom, just calm down. <laughs> you know, it's okay. You know, this, this, they will not die, and you won't kill them. It'll be okay. You know, um, and and just to have that sort of fellowship, and and also, you know, to to get closer to Christ. And you know, that journey uh, of getting closer to Christ uh, eventually led me to uh, be sitting in church one day and hearing Bob Ewan. Uh, who was the director of the diaconate at that point in time, you know, open, you know, come and talk at incarnation and say that we're open to receive, you know, uh, people to the diaconate. And, you know, that process was a seven year formation process from the time I wrote my first spiritual autobiography to you know, when I was ordained and um, five years, excuse me, sorry, five or six years, 2007 to 2012. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, a lot of discernment, you know, and, and uh, you know, I kept saying, and I do, I use the same thing these days, you know, I'm going to go a direction that I think is right. And, and uh, until I feel like God's telling me it's not right. And, and that was the way it was with the diaconate. You know, I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a deacon. You know, I, I know that I was being called, but those are two different things. <laughs> those are two different things. Um, and I, I, I feel like today that it, that it was the right thing for me, obviously, but, um, well, our know, community is certainly lucky to have you as a deacon and it has personally been a blessing for me to work with you in ministry and to be your friend and to walk along with you as brothers in faith. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's a great thing to have you here in our community and your family. God bless them. Uh, <laughs> lucky to have you too. Yeah. And so. <laughs> Now that we've gotten some of the lighthearted, fluffy part of the interview out of the way, I want to talk serious stuff and serious. Let's, let's get into sports um, because you and I see each other a lot. And on the one hand, we'll talk about some deep spiritual stuff and religious life and all that. Um, but we also shoot the breeze with sports and you as a Boston fan love the Red Sox. Am I right? I do. And I'm sure you got the hat. Yep. So we're switching. I do. And yeah. yeah. That's your your team has been pretty good lately, but I want to talk about my team for just oh, a second. Yeah. We yeah. are still the reigning champs. <laughs> for now. That's so right. that's right. You have two. We have right? two I got I got some reigning <laughs> championship teams that are are, are doing okay right now. Um, 
So it's interesting, as a Boston fan, I, I have a lot of family in Boston. They love the Red Sox. But a lot of my Boston Red Sox fans are also Patriots fans. But you, my friend, are not a, a New England <laughs> Patriots fan. Tell me about that, because there are some people who, who need to understand the distinction uh, of your sports fandom. That's right, because I, I hate the Patriots, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I despise the Patriots, and, and um, primarily because I, I also hate the Yankees. So they, they, they have similar you know, kind of teams. Uh, most of the reason why uh, was because the Patriots were horrible when I was growing up. But and, so were the Red and, Sox. But, you know, but I told you, yeah, I told you about that shot you get when you're a kid. Right, all right. You, know, you really don't have a choice with the Red Sox, but, you know, they don't have one for the Patriots or the, or the Bruins or the Celtics. So, you know, it's a different thing. So, uh, but I had moved to South Florida when I was in mid-teens, mid-teens and, uh, uh, in 1980, early, and so I was a young adult in 84 and Marino had come on board. Yeah, he was all right. He was pretty good. And he was pretty good, and Shula was there. And so a lot of good good feelings about the Dolphins. And, uh, you know, so I, I, mean, I went to a number of Dolphins games and had friends who were, like, Buffalo Bills fans at the time. So, you know, it was the Dolphins and the Bills, you know, in these AFC, in the AFC championship games. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so, you know, but, but it was also very comfortable being a Dolphins fan to lose, to become so close. <laughs> it was a very familiar You had good feeling. training in the wonderful city of Boston to, to <laughs> get there, but not pull it out. Yeah. But just, just close, you know, always between Buckner's legs, you know, uh, always. <laughs> Bill Buckner <laughs> to this day. Yeah, yeah, you know, he got actually honored, you know, I think it was after the 2004 World Series. He was like forgiven, you know, blessed, and everybody good, right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> So, Incarnation family, good things to know about Deacon Tom. Yes to the Red Sox, no to the Patriots, but you are a UVA fan. I am, I am a UVA fan. And, uh, Excellent. They have, yes, that, that would have been a very good, a very good uh, thing to follow. And it's nice, you know, to have a little sports going on. And I really do miss right? my sports. And I, I, and I know it's not Jesus. And I know, you know, we, you know, in some sense, it's a, a, a distraction, but you know, sports play is an important part of our culture, and um, mm. and it's important to uh, to have it in perspective. You know, it is not it's not something to be worshipped, and so uh, you know we do have moments in our in our culture where we where we push youth sports above other things, and so you know we're, there's certainly a balance of, of that also speaking of balance, but but overall sports is a good thing, and, and you know uh, it's good. It was good for me growing up, and um, it yeah. definitely has a bonding impact. You know, with with my friends. You know, um, yeah, so it's a way for us to connect with one another. You know, sports it, is just another way for us to relate and to form community and relationships. And on that note, we are hoping this interview will help you get to know Deacon Tom a little bit better and cultivate that relationship with him. And in this time of quarantine, we're hoping that we can still all stay connected even though we are socially distant. Um, so please everyone be safe. God bless you. We will keep you in our prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. Go Capitals. Go Bruins. Go UVA. Go <laughs> what else do I got? Go, go Nationals. Go Sox. Go Sox. Go Sox. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. We will talk to you soon. God bless. Thanks for watching.